Welcome back golfers. Today we're going to check out the swing of Lexi Thompson, one of LPGA's top players. We're going to look at the things that she does great. We're going to look at the things that she does that can translate into your golf swing. And then we're going to look at her finish, which everybody kind of, you know, looks at and goes, eh, like that could, you know, it's not the most beautiful finish. We're going to figure out why that finish is the way it is. And we're going to give a couple drills that would even help Lexi to get her, her finish better. And it'll help you in the process. Stay tuned. So here's the swing of Lexi Thompson, uh, one of LPGA's top golfers, like I said, and she has an extremely athletic golf swing. She's one of the longer players on the LPGA Tour as well, and she has great hand-eye coordination in her golf swing. So when I'm breaking down a golf swing, it doesn't matter if it's the everyday amateur or a professional's golf swing, the, the order that we look at for improving a swing starts setup. Setup is 90% of a golf swing. You gotta have a good setup in order to hit a good shot, otherwise you're just manipulating through it. So we're gonna start with setup with Lexi. We're gonna then go into her footwork. We're gonna look at her footwork from backswing to transition to finish. And we'll catch back up on that finish position at, at the end. And then we'll go into how the body moves biomechanically and kind of her balance points and we're really gonna get a good sense of where her, go where her golf swing is and what makes her such a great athlete. We're gonna also be able to take what we saw from that video and, and incorporate it into our own golf swings. So we're looking at Lexi Thompson's setup first. That's the first thing we wanna look at is her setup. And we're looking at how athletic looking she is. You can see the nice straight spine on her down the line image. You can see her body structure where her body weight is nice evenly distributed from left to right. So she feels that weight centered in you know, maybe the front of her arches. And she's putting some great lines. So you see her, her feet line, her hip line, her knee line, her shoulder line are all going the same direction as well. So that's something you can really take away from Lexi's setup because this is something any golfer can get into is a proper setup. Look at our front on position. And she got that ball a little bit further back um, with that mid iron. And you can see her body's in a position that's you know, very athletic as well from this, this position as well. Uh, head's a little bit more on top of the ball than you see a lot of other players. Uh, a little bit less positive spine tilt, which we've talked about in previous videos. If you haven't seen those videos, go check out my videos on positive spine tilt. Super important aspect of the golf swing. So we're going to look at Lexi from down the line first and kind of look at her takeaway and kind of break down the way that we see uh, her swing go back, how she maintains her balance points and positions. So I put a line on, on the front part of Lexi and the back part of Lexi just so you can see and I drew a line on her spine tilt as well. So she takes it back. You can see how her butt just stays right up against that line, if not crosses it, just a hair. Big open turn with those hips and a good solid rotation with, that, with those shoulders. Let's look at it from front on. And you can see how big of a rotation that Lexi makes. She is 90 degrees at L position on her backswing. When she gets her shoulders fully rotated, she is all the way up, probably up to 115 to 120 degrees rotated. That arm is way back there. And because her arms get so far behind her, we see that her balance point and her hands actually get a little bit behind her center. And that's just because her turn was so big. She could bring that back a little bit more just by tilting her shoulders down a little bit, which will bring those, that handle, those hands back into the center a little bit more. But she's pretty, you know, as athletic as Lexi is, she can get away with it. A lot of golfers out there, I always try to keep your hands in the at most athletic position you can be in to make your first move, and that's in your balance point, right, right above your arches. All right, so we're at the top of the swing, that huge rotation with Lexi, nice and balanced. We're looking at her footwork, good rotation in those that left knee working in towards that right toe, first move through our transition from the top. You can watch she makes a 
really quick transition with those knees back to 50-50 and she's doing that before her hands even get to her shoulders. You also look at her right knee from the front on position and she's driving those knees. Her left knee is working out but her right knee is driving in and that's giving her a lot of load into her golf swing. If we look at her hip line at the top, her hip slides to the left side. Not quite as much as I would prefer getting. Um, the other thing is I drew a circle around her head. If you look at the circle, her body or her back is actually shifting slightly towards the target side and her head's actually moving a little bit forward in the golf swing. Now this is not something I would want my students to get in the habit of because I want to see your head stay behind your center of your pelvis because when you do that then you're, you're maintaining a positive spine tilt and then increasing the positive spine tilt as you work through it which is going to help with your rotation. All right, so we're looking at her at 50-50. Her hands are above her shoulders when her knees square up, bottom of the transition. So from here, she's just basically in a very athletic, loaded up position that she can just move through to the golf ball. And you can see it because she's got to 50-50, she's able to get those hips really open when she's coming into impact. You know, a lot of the golfers out there struggle with getting those hips open earlier you get that transition, those knees to square up, the easier it is to open up the hips, allow your body to swing in front of you instead of across you. And we've talked about that in past videos as well. We want to make sure our, body, our hands are, our swing is moving in front of us as if the same idea as throwing a pitch. If you're going to turn and throw a pitch, you're not going to throw that pitch across your body. You're going to throw it in front of your body. So we want to make sure we're moving our body in a way that we can open everything up through the through impact into the finish. So now we're going to look at we're going to go back to the top. We're going to look at the compression and then extension of Lexi's knees. So you can see when she starts, she's nice and tall, athletic looking. When she gets to her top of her backswing, you see that right leg. It's almost identical to where she started. So she's maintaining the flex in her right knee as she takes it. It allows her to have a nice solid side to swing back into her backswing too. As she moves, starts the downswing, now you can see the compression of those knees as she makes her turn with those with her rotation of her hips. The left hip is moving the hand, see that arm stuck to the chest. Right there, so load, bottom of the transition, right there. And now her knees are compressed, and now she's gonna start on the downswing, now she's gonna start extending as she comes into the ball. So she's got compression, and now extension as she comes into the ball. And that's an important aspect of that timing mechanism we need when we work on our golf swing. Is we need to get good compression, and as we come into the ball, we need good extension. And we need to have the right timing to do that correctly. Now as she hits the ball and goes through to her follow through, now this is where it gets interesting with Lexi. If you watch her legs on the down line view, you can actually see her right thigh, her right hamstring, and her hips actually rotate counterclockwise. So they're working against her body. They're working the opposite direction. It's like going full blast on the freeway, hitting, you know, shifting into reverse while moving forward, moving backwards, and then she hits it in forward again and moves forward again. It's a very interesting move. And the reason why she's doing that is to allow the club to kind of catch up to her golf swing because she got the club back behind her center at the beginning with her balance. When she comes in the impact, she leaves that face is slightly open. She needs to do something to square it up really quick at the ball. And that's why she puts the reverse into her hips to help with, with the club squaring up at impact. It's a very unique move. So, and because of that, for watching her hips, you can see how they kind of get locked out. When she hits that reverse in her hips, they get locked out all the way till she gets almost belly button height with her hands going through. You know, you see her legs almost straight at this point, and then the kind of fake finish at the end. Now we're gonna look at it down the line as well. So we're gonna watch her foot, her right foot now. Her right foot's super important in Lexi's finish move and the reason why she actually puts that reverse into her hips. So as she's coming down into the golf ball, 
she gets up onto that right toe and the right shoelace is actually working forward and not kicking in. So as she's moving, you can see that, and then that foot, and as she's moving, that foot actually rolls to the opposite direction. So you see her foot actually work flat and then work backwards. It's working away from her, and that's why the, the you can see her leg move backwards and her hips move backwards because that foot moves backwards and away from her, widening out her legs, and then she kind of gets, you know, three quarters up there, the L position on the fall through, and then she kind of fakes the finish. And this is where a lot of people criticize Lexi Thompson's golf swing because her, her follow through is not the prettiest follow through there is in the game of golf. She has a very athletic move into the ball. She creates a ton of power, but as she gets into the ball and then going through, she has this kind of funky little rotation finish in her golf swing, which causes us to get to kind of go, oh, you know, she really does, you know, has a lot of power, but what's up with the, with the finish? So before we get into Lexi's fixes and what I would do as a coach for Lexi to improve her golf swing, we're going to look at how her upper body works uh, compared to her hip line and a little bit in that left side of her body as she rotates through. All right, so we're gonna take it back to her backswing again. We're gonna watch that club go back. You can see it's right on plane going back a toe up position. L position, it gets a little bit behind her at the top of the swing. Remember, she's got that huge rotation. Top of the swing, hands are a little bit behind center with that huge 115 to 120 degree rotation in her shoulders. And then as she starts to come down, her, her left hip is driving. She's, she's maintaining that connection with her arm to her chest. As she's dropping it down and she actually has a vertical drop at the beginning of her downswing so you'll see her hands get to the top and they vertically drop that first bit of her swing and that's her trying to load up the club even more and get even more torque out of it so that she can bring more power into the ball it's a tough move to learn um, you got to be really flexible in the body in order to, for it to work so as she starts her downswing, see the little vertical drop, knees square up, bottom of the transition, her hands are a little bit behind her balance point. She keeps turning, she gets that, that shaft right down her forearm, hips are starting to open up. You can see that nice torque between her shoulders and her hips. And as we bring it down to toe up position, you can see that shaft going right down her toe line and her hips are open, her shoulders are almost square. The one thing we are looking at here is that left shoulder. That left shoulder creates a bit of a separation more than most pros out there. Her left arm and her left side of her body. Usually you see most pros have a pretty stacked position coming in where they're pressing that left bicep into their left side of their body to keep connection. You know, Lexi here actually has, a, has lost a little bit of that connection and what that does, what that does is because her shoulder is down in this position, it actually elongates this muscle here. And this is a very important power muscle coming through. You know, Lexi is probably very dominant in her right side of where she swings. And she doesn't, because she doesn't utilize this muscle in the back of her shoulder coming through to help increase speed driving through the golf ball through impact. She, hers is actually a little bit late. So we can watch that really quick. So coming into impact, you see that separation. She starts to turn really hard. She gets her shoulders really open, kind of help counteract that, oh, that disconnect in her left arm to her left side. And then if you watch, we look at front on now, you can see how pulled down that shoulder is as she comes into impact. And even on the down the line image, you can see how that shoulder's pulled and she's not utilizing that left side until she gets to about belly button height, then that then that shoulder's able to reconnect and move through. And that's about the time that she starts to fake that finish in her golf swing. So one thing that I would do, have her work on, is trying to maintain that arm to that chest or the side of her body. Put like a glove or something underneath that left arm 
and try to maintain that arm to that chest as she's working through that golf ball. So it allows her to be more connected and actually have a little bit more power through it. Yeah, Lexi needs more power. But this would actually help Lexi create more power. And there's a lot of room for Lexi to actually create more power in our golf swing. We'll get to more on that here in a second. So then we see that awkward little finish going through and then she kind of you know fake turns with that we talked about that foot and then goes to the finish so a lot of great stuff in Lexi's swing but we're going to get to a few things that can help you and can also help Lexi get better and more powerful in the golf swing all right so the first fix I'm going to have to do with Lexi is to help with her body to keep rotating through the golf ball and that's strengthen her grip a little bit a lot of golfers associate grip being strong and weak and neutral and they don't associate it well with what your hips are doing through your golf swing as you're if you're going to be able to use a strong grip in your golf swing where that v is going outside that shoulder you need to make sure your body like lexi's does it gets very open at impact because that's going to help square up the face, de-loft the club, and, and allow your body to keep rotating through without having to put, you know, hold anything back when you're coming through. So Lexi's swing, she has a very pretty neutral grip. As we can see on her downswing, as she gets the toe-up position, her club is just slightly kicked in which is fine for most golfers. But with Lexi, her hips are so far open that she has to now put some type of break on because this position's actually slightly open for where her hips are at. So for golfers out there, you know, that position is probably fine for you because when you come to impact, your hips are probably only slightly open, if not barely open. Lexi's hips, when she comes to impact, are in this position and that's very open and that will make it so without a strong grip she's gonna have to do something with her hands and you see a little bit of a flip in Lexi's hands where she gets very handsy through the ball and she has great hand-eye coordination she can get away with it but that's another reason why we see the break in her hips is to allow that face to square up really fast and then release through that golf ball really quick and this is where the aspect of what we see in her finish is getting caused from. So that breaking with her hips working so far ahead, they actually work backwards and her hands and her shoulders now are further ahead. So the average golfer that we've talked about in the past with, with getting into a chicken wing position is typically because your shoulders pass your hips on the downswing. Your shoulders are getting further ahead than your hips. And as soon as that happens, you kind of get stuck and your arm gets into a weird position and you end up creating the chicken wing. So Lexi doesn't get into this position until post impact, which is different than most golfers. I don't see very many swings like Lexi's where she actually gets into a post swing position where then she puts her hips back and then her shoulders cross up. And that's why you get the funny finish in Lexi's golf swing. So another aspect of Lexi's golf swing that kind of gets her a little disconnected. If you look at her lead arm coming through impact, her lead arm actually creates all this separation right here underneath her arm to her left side coming through impact. She gets into that position and then you see the flips, her hands gets out in front and then you see that funny move across the ball. So this, is, this happens in a lot of golfer swings. And there's a simple way to practice not having this happen. It, we can take our shirt sleeve and kind of pull it underneath and try to feel connection there. Or the drill that I like to do when I'm hitting balls on the range is just a shortened back follow through. And all we're gonna do is come through the golf ball and we're gonna feel the pinch of that elbow staying down and kind of tight to your left side. And that's gonna allow that right arm to extend and get into a better position. You're gonna finish shoulder height with your hands. So all you're gonna go to is there, and you're gonna feel a tightness kind of pull down in that left side. You can also put a glove in that side. A lot of golfers do that. So let's hit one really quick, kind of show you that, that position. So when we're setting up, 
good athletic position. And now as we come through it, we're just going to finish short. So even if you want to finish to start three quarters, that's fine too. Right there, you can see where I finished. Right there, that arm's nice and tight to that left side. We're just going to shoulder height with the hands. And you can hit balls that way. Just hit the brakes right there. Keep that elbow nice and tucked. Feel the tension there. And that'll keep everything working back and through. And it'll allow this part of your shoulder to start engaging and creating more power coming through to help spring that ball further down, the, down towards your target. All right, fix number three for Lexi that I would be pushing her to do would be to fix the footwork coming through the golf ball. So I'm going to show you a video of Sergio Garcia and Lexi Thompson together. I'm going to show it really quick. I'm going to show you and you'll see the difference as we're going through the footwork. So as you watch the, the swings, they're very similar in the way that they set up, the way that they turn, they get that big shoulder turn, the way they drop the club down is very similar, the way that they start to bring the club into L position and then toe up position, super similar. Now, once we get to toe up position, this is where it starts to get a little bit different. You can watch Sergio's swing or hit Sergio's footwork is a little bit more subtle. He's gonna start driving a little bit more. You can see the connection, his left arm's a little bit tighter as well. And as he comes into the ball, you can see how his, the body positions are fairly similar as well coming through impact. Lexi has a little bit more spring in her in her legs than, than Sergio. So as they start to come through the ball, now you'll see the difference in between the footworks. Lexi's right foot starts working backwards, her hips are reversing their rotation, and then she fixes she fakes her finish. Sergio, on the other hand, he keeps driving through and he has that nice pretty finish where he finishes that shaft underneath his shoulders and right around into a nice balanced position. You know, he's driving, you can look at his right foot, he's driving that right foot heel down and turning that shoe in and then moving it through to the finish. You know, this is an important aspect to having good footwork coming through the ball is you need to make sure that shoelace starts to turn in and then starts to work towards the target. So if you're watching my foot, what I'm looking at is this foot right here. So when you're coming into impact, that foot is driving and turning inwards. Hips allows the hips to start bumping and opening up. And then that's gonna start bringing that shoe in and around and to the finish. So I'm gonna give you a simple drill. and it's something you can do when you're practicing and I'm going to give you a tool you can use that you usually have in your bag anyways. So I call this drill the kick drill and we're going to use it with a water bottle. So how this drill works is you're going to get in your setup position to that golf ball and then you're going to take that water bottle and you're going to stick it right in the center of your arch on the inside step of that shoe. So if we were Lexi Thompson when you come through she would not be able to knock over that water bottle. The point of this drill is for you to drive and knock that water bottle over as you move those, those feet through to finish. So, Lexi's golf swing, if you see her, her foot go this way, and you can see if that happened, I'm not even gonna hit the water bottle. It's gonna work right around it. So, this, feeling that when you when you're doing this drill it's the feeling of making a soccer kick like I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna kick a ball with that foot as I come into impact so that's where the kick drill kind of gets the name from coming in and you're kicking the ball as you're making impact with the ball out there and then that will allow you to knock over that water bottle so let's try one out here I'm gonna hit one out into the out into the range we're gonna try to knock over that water bottle as we're working through it. Just like that. And my water bottle has a little bit of water in it. You know, halfway is fine, a third of the way is fine, just put Make sure it's got water in the bottom to give some stability. That'll give you a little bit of weight too, so you can feel when that pressure, 
when you start knocking over that water bottle because you want to feel it kick over and you'll even hear it too as it falls. So we want to turn, kick it over, move to that finish. So try the kick water bottle drill, it's a great one. Lexi Thompson, if you're watching this, you should try this one as well. That's going to help you keep your body moving through, lose the brakes and keep it moving so you can get a nice pretty finish so you won't get any more harassment about that finish position. Golfers, thank you for watching this week. I hope this breakdown of Lexi Thompson's swing can help you improve your golf swing. Remember, always start with setup. Everybody can get into a good setup. Then work footwork, then work body balance, and then as we work through the golf ball, we can, we can fine tune all the other aspects of your golf swing from there. Try out those key moves, try out those drills, and it'll like guarantee it'll make you a better golfer. Remember, your feet aren't working, your swing's not working. Catch you guys next time.